the next one, which is a total uh, clear everything of every problem that we have, doesn't it, Eric? Because you are giving us a full picture <laughs> of API design. Sure. <laughs> So how full sure. is that full? Is it like, you know, almost full glass or overflowing or? It's full, full. It's, um, it's the whole thing. No, mostly what I want to do is I really want to, and I think, we, I mean, we've had heard that, I think we have heard that already, like in a, vari in a variety of different ways. But I also want to talk a little bit about like the bigger picture of what API really is all about, what's important, maybe what to consider, what kind of approaches and tooling might be interesting there. Because I still see, and I think we've had like a lot of people reporting the same thing that in a lot of organizations, maybe that part really isn't taken into account enough. Yeah. So I think it's important that we always try to really understand why, why we're even doing these API things. <laughs> That is a good thing to understand. And so with that, I mean, <laughs> right? I guess so. I guess so. <laughs> okay. Can you put the slides up and then, then let's see. Or like, what, I, yeah, you don't have slides. You have something fancy. So whatever it is, put it up. <laughs> I think it is up. Is, no. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Fabio. Yes. Uh, Fabio made some magic. Now there is something oh. up. <laughs> Is this okay. the stuff? I don't know. I it's hard to tell for me. No, that's not what we should be seeing. I think Fabio's magic didn't work there. Um. Okay. <laughs> well, okay. we need some more fancy magic. <laughs> we need we need more advanced magic happening immediately. Um, yeah. Okay. I am sorry for doing if like you can, we tested if you can it just and take away the the previous share and then. Yeah, so I did. Again, um, uh, okay. okay. If that doesn't Sorry. work, then come, go away and come back. Go yeah, away. Um, <laughs> <laughs> go okay. away. Yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> no, but sometimes uh, it helps to reset the tech. Uh, if you can I try the share slides button, if you have the slides, or so that is the next try. How are we looking? Fabio and Ashlyn, do you see some stuff there? We don't yet. Okay, this looks like slides. This looks like slides. Yay, mission accomplished. Okay. Sorry for that little hiccup, but we're there. Okay. Good. Then I think I can just get started. So um, really glad to be here. Thanks, Mariuka, for organizing as usual. Thanks, Medi, for the whole series, right? It's it's uh, it's always a joy to be part of these events, so I'm I'm happy to be back. And what I want to talk about today is what I call API design, the full picture. And it's a little bit, like I said, um, in our little banter before we got started, it's a little bit about what to really take into for API design and the kinds of things that we sometimes go missing. Let me very briefly get started by talking about what I do and who I am and, and why I want to make these observations. So what I do, oh, by the way, if you want to follow the slides um, online, you can just go to my Twitter feed and my latest tweet has a link to the slides. They're online, they're browser-based, so you can just use them in any browser and, and then you can follow along. And also I have a lot of links in the slides. So typically if I talk about stuff and, and then you feel like you want to explore it more, you can just go to the slides and follow the links. And that sometimes is very useful. Okay. So what do I do? My job is mostly getting APIs to work, so to speak. So I, I work at Xway at a company where we sell API management at a variety of levels. So we have a gateway. We also have a management platform that works across a variety of gateways where you can have a catalog and all these things. So we are, let's say, a traditional API management vendor. What we see is that in a lot of cases, organizations are still struggling a little bit, trying to figure out what kind of API should we design, what is a good design, maybe what is not so such a good design, what, what should we do to really make APIs as useful as we can. And as part of my job, I did a lot of 
talking at conferences when that was still happening. And um, for the last two years, I've actually focused a lot of energy on creating videos. So if you're interested in API stuff, please uh, check out my YouTube channel. I post a lot of videos. Mostly I talk with a lot of people who are in the API space and do interesting things. And I just try to make sure that everybody gets an idea of what happens in the API space. And I do all of this as part of my job in the team called the x -ray Catalyst. And like I said, my job really is to make sure that organizations get the most out of their API investments because we want them to be happy because we sell them API management things. And if they don't feel like they get a lot out of that investment, they're not happy. And that's not good for us either. So we try to make sure that they're happy. And one of the things that we've seen is that a lot of organizations struggle. And we just heard that from the speaker before me. And I think we had other speakers making the same point, right? A lot of organizations still struggle a little bit with a good API design process. How should we go about to design APIs that are not just APIs, but that are APIs that actually matter for the business? And I think that is the part where we still sometimes as a community, to me, it seems has too much, we have too much of a like technology focused perspective on things. And that's mostly what I talk, what I want to talk about today, just making that perspective a little bit wider, giving you some examples of the things that you maybe should consider, pointing to some things where I think these are a good indication that things are changing. And I think that that's a good thing. And then hopefully that will help us to also better understand how we can actually have a better a more complete view of API design and how you can create good APIs. When we talk about APIs, in many cases, we talk about API products nowadays. Different people have a different understanding of what exactly that is. That's fine. That's not the main focus of this presentation. But one of the things that I think is important to really reflect just briefly on what does product mean. And when you just look it up in the dictionary, that's always, I think, a, a good example of you know, like, what does it really mean what I talk about? A product is referred to as a commodity, right? So you have a product, you have a consumer, and a product is basically, it's kind of the interface, right? Between a consumer who wants something and then somebody who provides something. And if it's a product, then it's, it's a good way where I know I just get this product and I get my needs satisfied, right? That's the magic of products, that they are kind of an interface, so to speak. That's what a product is. And this is really something that we always have to keep in mind when we talk about APIs. I've done full presentations on what is a good API, and there are many, many angles how you can approach this. For today, I, I want to keep it really simple. So what is a good API? Right? Because if we design APIs, of course, we want to design good APIs, and then we can ask ourselves, well, OK, so what is a good API? And I think a very, very simple definition, which of course could be extended in many ways, would be to say a good API has to be useful, it has to be findable, and it has to be usable. Right? These are definitely three properties that we would expect. And my claim is that useful is by far the most important one, meaning that if an API is not useful, none of the rest matters because nobody needs it, right? Even if it's wonderfully cataloged and perfectly restfully designed, it doesn't matter because nobody wants it, nobody needs it, even though it's a well-designed product. But it's not a useful product when there is no consumer for the product. So what I want to say with this is that I think sometimes we focus too much like on the more right side of things here for APIs to be usable, for APIs maybe to be findable, but I think we not necessarily always focus enough on making sure that the API is just useful, right? And there are many different ways in which you can make sure that this happens. And I just want to show you today a little bit of how things are moving in that direction. And again, there are many different ways how you can move into this direction, but I think it is something that is important to always keep in mind, that 
If we're not creating useful APIs, then none of the rest matters. And what can we see, let's say, in the bigger space of the API community that happens where people are creating these kind of different practices around APIs? In my previous job, before I joined X-Way, I was at CA and we used this picture for API lifecycle management. I'm not even sure whether it's still being used by um, CA or Broadcom now, maybe it is. And other companies have pretty much the same kind of picture. It's, it's really, it's not meant as saying this is a bad picture, it's just one example. And at least I, I also used this many times when I was still doing, doing uh, work for, for CA. And I think what's just really important here is to understand that if we look at models like this, it's all around kind of the, the tooling, the, the stuff that can be easily automated because, and I'm working for a software vendor, so you know I'm not criticizing just others here, but of course, as a software vendor, your goal is to show things in, in a way that where you can say, oh, we have something to fix this or to make this faster or to make this more efficient. Right? So you want to show things where you can then offer something that's natural. And all the things that are shown in this kind of API lifecycle are necessary things that need to be done, right? You need to develop, consume, monitor, manage, secure, test, um, APIs, there's even a little bit of strategy design in there, but it's kind of just like this odd little thing in the middle. And, and mostly this really focuses very much around the technical aspects of how do I get from, let's say, an open API specification to an instance running somewhere in production, right? That's kind of the idea. And then how do we also get to the point where the consumer is able to use it? And that's all necessary. Right? There's nothing wrong with it. But what I find interesting that if you look at what has happened recently, and, and these are just three examples that I want to give you just to show that it's, it's, a, it's something that's relevant because we see it happens over and over. So in the last year, I think we have seen three books published. And um, if you're interested in those books, I think they're all great. I, I, I like the books. I like the authors. For each of the books I actually have, if you click on the picture, you will actually be able to, to get to a video where you see like a little bit of info about the book. If you're interested in that, doesn't matter so much here. But the point that I'm trying to make now is that this is something that we've seen in the community that is being realized as something that probably needs to be addressed a little differently. And we've seen different instances of experienced API practitioners picking this up and then writing books about it. So the first one is by James Higginbotham. It's called The Principles of Web API Design. And he proposes a method that he calls ADDR, Align, Define, Design, Refine, which is about creating APIs. But the interesting part here really is to me is that it starts much earlier than with, so to speak, fully automatable tooling. It's a process that requires you to go to talk to people who actually want APIs to improve the business and then figure out what does this API need to do and then talk with them about it in non-technical terms. And then only later on in the process, you get to a point where you actually now translate this into a technical design such as open API or other API styles. And, um, and then you, make sure that you have people using it and then maybe you can refine it because you get some feedback. People tell you, ah, that's fine, but this like, seems too complicated, these kind of things. So if you look at this, I think it is a good example of a more complete picture of an API design process that I personally find convincing and that I personally have seen creating useful APIs in organizations. The second example that I have for you is it's kind of similar. It's by Micah Minson, a good friend of mine, also very well-known API practitioner. He's been around for a long time. We actually worked together at CA for quite a while. And he has published a book that is called Great Web APIs. 
And in those great web APIs, you have the same general process where you start with a business problem, you look at what is this business problem looking at from the, uh, from the eyes of a target audience who want to work with it. They want to get things done solving this business problem and using it as a digital building block. And then how do these things translate into a design that works for this target audience to um, get a, a digital building block that addresses the business problem, right? So it's, it's kind of, a, it's a similar process. It's not what James does, but I think it has more or less the same start and ending point. And that's the point that I'm trying to make. And just to be clear that this is really a trend that we're seeing here, he has a third book by Arnaud Loray, which is called The Design of Web APIs. And he, again, has a little different model. But again, I think we see a very similar overall perspective on how do we design good APIs. And again, it's not starting with we focus on figuring out whether we use get or post or put, but we focus on who are the users? What do they want to do? How do they want to do it? What kind of inputs will they provide? What kind of outputs do they expect? And do these things satisfy the goals that they have to be done? And again, it's a different process, but it's something where I think we see that there is a pattern emerging. And that, that really is my main takeaway for today, that I think we see these patterns emerging that are, I think, just a sign that APIs are more and more kind of being lifted, so to speak, out of this being just a technical thing area and getting more and more into they actually have to provide business value and how do you design APIs that do this, right? And we see more and more of this happening. And I think this is something where for the next couple of years in the API space, we will see more and more of this happening because in my mind, these are the APIs that have the biggest potential to really change your organization, to create value, to speed up digital transformation, however you want to frame it. But I think these are the APIs that really have an impact on how your organization works and not just this mere technical thing of, yes, of course we have APIs because everybody has APIs, right? That's not the point. Like everybody uses APIs, of course, because nothing works without APIs. But the question is, how do I get the most out of the APIs that I'm building? And I think this is what we see more and more happening that we need this wider picture so that we can get this done. And I just want to show you, like, just as an inspiration, a little bit maybe of the kinds of things that maybe we can do, that we can think about, that maybe we will see tooling for, that I would like to see or that I think we will see in hopefully the not too distant future. So one of the things, for example, that we all know and love is um, this example of open API, right? It's the good old pet store. I think this here is the latest and greatest version. At least it was, I think, yesterday or two, two days before when I looked at it. So this is the Open API 302 version of the pet store. And we all know um, how kind of the, the canonical way how you talk about these things and maybe how you look at them when you discuss them. And the canonical way may be, and I think you see that in a lot of tooling, maybe this swagger rendering of the open API, which kind of lists just all the operations of an API. And one of the things that I've, I've done recently that I just found very interesting, and I, again, I just want to show you these things for inspiration. So recently I had a really interesting chat with uh, Cesare Baltasso, who's working at a university. So he does research into APIs. And one of the things that they're working on is understanding the complexity of APIs. And one of the things they've been doing is they have, they have developed a visualization method for 
open API files. And that visualization, for example, is something maybe that's a better way for us to talk with business people about the APIs because now we can better see the structure. So let me briefly look at this, right? So this here is the visualization thing in action. So let's say if we go here and for some reason we decide that uh, the whole user stuff, we don't want the user stuff anymore. Maybe that doesn't make a lot of sense, but for the sake of demo, Oh, see, I shouldn't have done that. Sorry, because sometimes this tool doesn't update and I really don't know why. Uh, okay. Okay, that was not a good demo. Sorry for that. It 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 worked when I when I tried it just before this presentation. But the like I said, right, this is university work. This is not a commercial tool. But what I want to point out is that I think better covering this full life cycle, like the, the, a, the full picture of how we design APIs, right? I think this is where we probably will see like cool new tools being developed, maybe new methods. And, and of course we do have those, right? We have event storming and this and this and, and, and the ADDR method and the others that I mentioned. But what I wanna do is just to point out that I think all this process of making API design less technical and more oriented around businesses also means that we probably have to get better at putting these things together. And maybe not always we can actually put all of this in fully automated CI CD pipelines, but that's fine as well. That's not necessarily what we need to do. What we need to do is make sure that we create the best possible APIs. And this is really, the, I think the most important takeaway from here is to really tell you that in the end, I think from what we sometimes look at as API design, we have to zoom out a little and we have to really ask ourselves, why are we even doing this? What are we trying to accomplish with this? And hopefully our answer to this in most cases will be, we're trying to improve an organization to maybe improve um, the public government space, whatever, wherever we are working, right? We're, we're trying to get something done and then we can ask ourselves, okay, and how can APIs help us with that? And what would be the best possible APIs that can play that role? And how can we actually go about designing those APIs? But I think this zooming out part is something that at least sometimes we don't do enough. And that's my main message for today. I think let's zoom out more so that we better understand and reflect on why are we even creating an API and what are the things that we think that consumers would want to do with this API? What are the things that can be built with that API? How we can we make these possible? And then how can we design the API so that these things are achievable in the easiest possible way? And with this, I am done. Thank you very much, everybody. Like I said, if you're interested in any of the materials that I shared, um, check out the slides. They are linked from my Twitter profile, from my last tweet, I believe. If you want to find more information about myself, you can check out my Twitter feed or my YouTube channel, or you can find me on LinkedIn. And with this, I am done. Thanks a lot for listening. And I guess Mariuka probably will come back. Yes. I have a question for you from the audience, uh, and there might be even another one if somebody is really quick. Simon wants to know, <laughs> when determining usefulness of an API, how feasible is it to include actual consumers in the design uh, or rapid prototyping process? It, it's, it's something that you should really strive for. It, it very much depends on the kind of API you're building, right? So you can classify APIs, you can use different classifications. Like sometimes people like the model of having system APIs, process APIs, experience APIs. So, so if you're building experience APIs, you definitely should have consumers because somebody is trying to build an experience around that and they should be able to tell you whether that API will help them to build this experience or not. If you're working more on system or process APIs, it can be a little bit trickier, but I think in many cases you will find in, in an organization, you will find existing examples of this, right? We call this in our book, we call this um, API archeology, span just looking at how is information being used right now, right? Very, in most cases, you're not starting on a greenfield. 
So by looking at what's happening now, that might also help you to much to understand much better what ideally should be able uh, should be possible with an API. Yeah, I think okay. that the main thing is that you have to identify if you like who are your uh, wannabe <laughs> consumers of the API, and then make sure that you try to at least involve some of them somehow. Or, or it's I, I mean to this system. extent, right? It's it's really it's no no different from any other product. Either you have consumers, mm -hmm. um, that's the ideal case, or if not, or you combine these things, you make assumptions about consumers, but you document these assumptions and then you, you kind of build your stories around how you make those real or assumed consumers, how you help them to get stuff done. And that drives the way how you design and implement the API. And that's really, it's a very standard product development process, right? There's nothing special in yeah, terms yeah. of how, how it's different for APIs. Exactly. As long as you don't go around asking, would you like, you know, what kind of API would you like? And then you kind of satisfy yourself with that first answer that you get. If somebody, like in, from the real trenches, somebody asked that and got an answer, well, if you give me that XML, you know, whatever soap thing that you always do, then it's fine. <laughs> you know, th that is not the answer to satisfy yourself with. Um, no, no, you should you shouldn't make it easy for you, right? That's like you should make it easy yeah. for the consumers and hopefully not just for one consumer, right? That's that's kind of a big anti-pattern if you're if you're yeah. it's almost like Always there is no why. product for just one consumer, right? If it's for one yeah. consumer, it's not a product, it's it's a solution, exactly. like a like some snowflakey thingy. Yeah. Great. Hey, we could continue this for ages, I know, but we, you know, we have to stop because people need a break. Um, yes. And thank you, Eric. Let's see you in the Thanks next you days. <laughs> yes, we will meet again at some point. We will. We will. We always do. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Eric.